several years now. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, the transportation markups is the list that Tom is working, working from right now does not include our projects. So the projects, the projects that we have earmarks for right now were the list that I gave you, which was yeah. Coyote Reservoir, Noyo Harbor, and Public Safety Microwave. But shouldn't we have a transportation, keep those transportation projects at the forefront? And at oh, sure. Level? I mean, and we wrote, uh, and we, I think you received a copy of a letter trying to bring it to our attention of our senators because we didn't make the transportation markups in the House, so we tried to bring it to their attention, <laughs> and we were out, you know, we didn't we didn't make we didn't make the the markups in the Senate so we do our best but at this point for this upcoming year um, the markups are done by those committees and we didn't we didn't make any uh, didn't make their earmarks okay supervisor Smith thank you well on that note in terms of transportation we also had um, a pretty good effort on that second phase from for Mill Creek that's correct and we got great support letters I personally contacted the Blue Ribbon Coalition um, a number of environmental groups I mean we had support letters lined up that would have been I think pretty comprehensive on that so that just shows how competitive it is to get those monies yes that's exactly uh, it. you know so, so we're, in, we're in there swinging I think I think this upcoming year if we deliver on these three earmarks probably the best we've done in the, at least the time. last six years uh, with these earmarks so you you know you, you seek the money where you can get it you put your proposals out there every year you go back and you try to do your best to fight for them but if you don't make it, um, that's you know that's the process back in Washington, and there's not there's at this point once the bills are marked up and out of subcommittee and the full committee, there's no You're really done. chance to getting something back inserted. Our, our congressman sits on the Ways and Means Committee. You'd think that he would have a little more. Okay, let's move this along. Thank you. Okay, the CEO's report. Uh, I didn't recognize him. Move in. Okay, um, we just, uh, some good news for you. We actually just got a letter that we've been uh, conditionally awarded $450,000 for CDBG. Um, I'm trying to do a little research on this. Normally it's a $500,000 grant. So I'm not sure if in tune with the governor's budget, everything's been throttled back 10%, and that's why it's 450000 I also don't know I had requested 50000 as a what I, what I call a set aside uh, earmark to do some other ADA improvements, so uh, we'll know in a, a few weeks what's um, actually going to happen with that uh, particular item and what the exact funding is. Homeland Security, thanks to the terrific es efforts, uh, mainly uh, our HHSA staff putting together a, a terrific packet, we were able to get through this uh, audit with the Homeland Security back from the the, um, the days of Mesa. And uh, we do have some audit exceptions that we have to deal with, but it has gone from being potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars to literally tens of thousands of dollars. But we do have to pay for the audit. And so I'll be looking to the, the um, city of Ukiah and the fire districts and those people who were originally partners in Mesa who helped create this mess uh, to help pay for the cost of the audit. Uh, we've also volunteered to be a training site for Williamson Act because we think that's really important. And that looks like that's going to come together and various county staff are, uh, are working toward that goal. So I think we'll, we'll be a highlight there. Um, city county meetings, you know about those. Thursday I'll be going to Santa Cruz for the League of Cities meetings that relate to uh, uh, both the activities of uh, coastal counties. I've given you a little copy of the agenda. I'll give you a report uh, the next time we meet uh, about uh, what that uh, involved. Uh, there was a lot of issues that will be on that agenda relating to the uh, Coastal Commission, of course. Um, and cost recovery, we're meeting next week already. I'm, I'm not seeing it happen this fast before, but we're already meeting next week with state OES agencies to submit some preliminary paperwork on what our costs are, and then uh, other items you you know about. So uh, and those are some of the little significant things in addition to everything else that we're doing. Uh, we will be doing an after action. It's called an after action 
after action report uh, debriefing with the uh, sheriff OES HHSA and talk about when right or wrong with the fire and we'll have some uh, items for you in the future to do that uh, sort of to clear the slate on that one but that concludes my report thank you very much any questions to the CEO on his report okay let's move back to um, we have two items off consent and then we'll move to uh, reports and appointments um, we have item 12 and item 9 I don't remember who pulled these so uh, with the person that pulled these um, you did 9 okay you want to take up item 9 Supervisor Delmar thank you mr. chairman just one quick suggested change and then a comment on page six and it's finding number three the response the last sentence the board disagrees with the fourth bullet to the extent that form AC06 is not the only form available for submission of reimbursements I like to see a strike strike that and because I think that is the appropriate form to use and it goes along with the intent of the statement and the finding the CEO's office agrees with that bullet and I'd like to see us agree with it that's my recommendation and then the comment we are and this is a question for council just to make sure that, that I'm accurate here there are three responses peppered throughout this one from the board one from the CEO and one from the clerk we are only approving the board of supervisors response that's correct okay so we even though they're in here we are, right. our action does not so, um, does not approve we're not commenting on the CEOs or the clerks that's right okay. you know historically I guess the the county has put together the CEO and BOS responses in the same document but um, we're looking at that because I think the grand jury is correct in in requesting individual responses and then they will put it together into one response that you know so that would change how we do how we've been doing things okay so we're looking at that so that with just I wanted that clarification mr. chairman and then to make suggest to make that one change and that's all I had on it and that change again was on page what page six six it's the the last sentence in our response to finding number three and just I would just change that to the board agrees with the fourth bullet which is the same answer the CEO gives Okay. And I'll just say the reason why I made that distinction, and it's being just super technical, is because of the second sentence where it says both the COB and the claimant supervisor are currently required to sign a completed form. I just wanted to point out that there's more than one travel reimbursement form that's, that can, can be utilized. It's a, just a technical response on my part. Okay. Supervisor Pinches? Uh just a comment to that it says in the response that that I agreed to uh, pay back the county the 